We Own Broadband Edition, presented by Vedantu. India, get free live online courses. Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Beyond Sports Broadband Edition with me, Digvijay Singh Deo. My guest today is an Asian Games gold medalist in tennis and David Sharan is joining me from Manchester. David, uh, how's it been? Uh, we've been reading it's pretty rough out there in the UK. So how, how have you been managing through all of this? Yeah, I mean, these are obviously tough times uh, for everybody. Uh, and especially in the UK, things things are, are not looking that good. Uh, every day, you know, you hear in more and more cases. Um, so uh, it, I guess it's it's really tough. But, uh, you know, as everybody is sort of staying indoors, you, you sort of stay in your own cocoon, really just step out, uh, you know, to get the uh, essentials. Um, so, uh, yeah, pretty much under lockdown as, as everybody else. Okay, but how did you manage to get uh, lockdown in, in, in the UK? Because was it uh, something which was planned or were you on your way somewhere for some tournament and you got just caught right in between? So, um, the, the last tournament I was at was uh, the Davis Cup tie in, in Croatia. And I came back to Delhi for a few days. Um, and, uh, you know, I was to the next set of tournaments I was going to play was the, the clay court swing. And I decided to train in the UK for a few weeks before, you know, the, the start. Uh, I was going to play a tournament in Marrakesh. Um, so, the plan was to train in the UK for three weeks and then, uh, you know, head, uh, head to Morocco. Uh, but once I got here, you know, India sort of closed uh, its borders. And then uh, we got to know that the tournaments got cancelled. The, the, the next few tournaments on clay got cancelled. And then UK closed its borders. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know... Um, it just happened one after the other, and uh, I am um, I'm, I'm here. Um, it would have been tougher, I guess, if I was by myself. But you know, I I'm here with my wife. Uh, she's obviously British, and uh, uh, in a way, this has given me a chance to spend some time with her. Yes, and if, if anyone wants to realize how to stay fit during this period, all they need to do is scroll through your Twitter feed because you've been making some very ample use of the back garden. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I think it's, it's great in a way that, uh, you know, my wife, she's a tennis player. So uh, when everybody's in, in lockdown, you know, uh, not everybody or, or a tennis player would not have somebody to practice with or hit with. Um, the last time I was at a tennis court was again six, seven weeks ago. Uh, and uh, the tennis courts are shut here as well. But um, uh, we are trying our best to keep fit. Um, you know, we have a we have a back garden uh, where... We try to do some volley drills and, and just, just come up with new innovative things, you know, to, to keep active. Um, I put, uh, you know, we put a sheet on, on, a, on a goal post and just, you know, we've been hitting balls into that. Uh, we, we go on the road sometimes just to hit a few balls on the road or uh, even, you know, hit against uh, the, the wall. So uh, just, just trying to, to stay active really and, and um, trying our best to, to stay fit in these uh, conditions. Yes, because I think initially the shock was for everyone what you do in those first two, first one or two weeks and that people sort of started figuring their way around uh, this. Uh, because, you know, you've seen more and more videos emerge of Twitter. I mean, your Asian Games partner, Rohan Bopana, I saw him the other day. He's in poor, but he was really whacking those balls into a wall really hard. Uh, so, more or less, you know, people trying to get around this and trying to stay fit. Yeah, it's, it's actually a very uh, interesting situation, especially for us tennis players, because, um, you know, our, our circuit um, uh, is, is really nine or ten months. You start in January and you finish in uh, October, early November, and you have uh, such a short off-season. Um, so, uh, you know, you're just playing tournaments back-to-back, -back and, um, you know, you're in a situation like this where, you know, you've not had uh, th this longer break uh, from, from tournaments. Um, and, and, you know, whenever you're training, there's always something to, to look forward to. There's always a target. There's always a goal. Okay, we have a tournament in four weeks or three weeks and, and you can sort of plan your training around that. But in, in this situation, you know, you don't know when you're going to get back uh, on court and then when you're going to get back to, to traveling and, and playing tournaments. So uh, what do you prepare for? Um, and uh, <clears throat> obviously, you don't have access to, you know, a, a tennis court or, or a gym. So... You, you have to try to sort of, you know, make the best of whatever is available. 
um, so it's 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 tricky, and I guess uh, that's why everybody is trying to you know stay active and and uh, try to stay fit uh, as best as they can. Hmm. You know, you listed out all those problems which all of you all are facing because it's extremely tough to be a professional player. Because listen, you can't make your living playing virtual tournaments like we're seeing right now in Madrid. I mean, that's not the way out. I mean, there there, there is a complete ecosystem out there which is currently start for cash. Yeah, I mean it's it's unfortunate. I guess that's in all spheres of uh, life, you know, all professions right now. Everybody is sort of in 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 the same boat. Um, uh, but but especially for us as as a as you know as a sports person, I uh, you know our our career span is is pretty short. You know, we can't play tennis till fifty or sixty. So so you know, this is sort of the time frame that we we need to sort of try to make the most of. uh this is also a living yes you know it's a passion and 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 i mean for someone like me i, I love playing tennis but uh you know i don't know how many more years uh, you know i can i can play on the tour and and uh this break sort of just throws uh, everything up uh, in the air and you know we don't know what's going to happen so um just you know <clears throat> every now and then we hear something new or we keep hearing updates and and things are not looking good um so uh it'll be interesting to see um you know when the tournaments uh, start again um first they said that uh, you know the the, the tournaments are going to you know they 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 canceled uh, tournaments for 5 6 weeks and it was like oh great maybe it's a it's a good time to have a, a little bit of a break and you know uh, reset and then get back uh, but then they canceled uh, all the clay court events and now they've they've canceled the the grass events as well um and the way things are going <clears throat> it's possible that the tour gets uh, suspended even further so um uh, yeah i mean we we don't know what's what's uh, coming up and and as as a as a sports person or as a tennis player you know this is really our, our livelihood and um um yeah uh, there's no there's it no is, clear it, is this waiting to know what, when this will resume or when you can go out and play again is that the biggest worry you know ultimately your professionals whenever it opens up you will go and play but just waiting and not knowing what is going on is that the biggest concern right now for especially not not the top players obviously the top players have enough enough to you know sort of fall back on yeah i guess uh it's it's stuff for everyone i guess you know everybody has their goals and and aspirations and and as i said uh, a career is short you know uh, a lot of us have worked for many years to reach our rankings and to be able to play at, uh, at bigger events or you know um i mean just just like if i if i take my example like you know after the juniors you know i probably played like the future circuit for 7 8 years and i went through the challenger circuit and now i'm playing the bigger events and uh, i am 34 obviously i'd love to be playing for the next few many years but um you know this is really the time uh, you know where uh, i would like to you know get higher in the rankings and 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 play the bigger events and and do really well uh so so it's tough to be away from the circuit um and having said that you know uh, players who are sort of you know still lower rank or who are sort of you know working their way uh, up in the rankings um uh, we know it's it's not easy for them um already um, i mean i feel like um you know uh, the prize money is not great in in that because uh, recently we have this announcement from the atp in all the The two, both the tours, you know, all the grand slams, ITF, everyone getting together and announcing a sort of a player relief package. We're still waiting to hear those details. But as you mentioned this, I wanted to step in because how dire is the situation for people below the rank of a hundred or maybe even higher, seventy-five and below? Maybe you don't know. Yeah, I think some somebody who's in the top hundred, especially in singles, I don't think uh, they would be struggling. But um, um, having said that, like someone ranked four hundred or five hundred, you know. um is is not breaking even in in tennis so in a situation like this where you know the tournaments are taken away from from them uh, it it's it's even tough um i feel um in in some of the other sports you know if you take football or um i don't know even cricket like someone who's uh, 400 or 5th 100th best player is making a very good uh, living out of out of you know his his, his profession but in tennis that's not the case so um in in general obviously you know i think tennis would benefit if if there is more funds like down the down the rankings um you know people would see that more players would be keen to to get into tennis and and you know just it would be good for tennis in in general but uh 
these times i guess are even tougher now that you know there's there's nothing to to fall back on or you know um, sure you know players want to improve and 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 get higher in the rankings and then this this long break would would really affect them it's interesting you bring that up divish because you know what we see is is uh, is the glamorous side of tennis you know we see you traveling all across the world we see you in fancy locations taking photos on your social media feeds what we don't see is is the nomadic life which all of you professionals lead i mean uh, it's week in week out in a different city traveling living out of a suitcase and and it's not just you know in doubles uh, to be fair the price money isn't isn't as big as the singles players you would have split that price as well how expensive is it to be a traveling professional who say below rank you know 25 in the world right yeah it's 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 not easy i mean especially if you look at doubles you know the prize money is not compared uh, comparable uh, to to the singles players uh, but <clears throat> tennis is an individual sport you know you look at other sports uh, team sp- team sports you know the management is looking after their expenses or you know even uh, you know making arrangements for them everything is taken care of but uh, as a tennis player we are we managing everything on our own um it's very unpredictable because you know we have tournaments every week uh, and our travel plans and hotel reservations and and everything changes based on how you do in a tournament because as soon as you lose in in a, in a particular tournament you want to get to the other place you know start getting ready for the for the next tournament so uh, you really have to you know manage everything on your own uh, flight bookings uh, as i said hotel reservations and and whatever else you need to you need to do uh, and it does get very expensive uh, you're managing your own expenses um apart from that you know if you have anybody travel with you like a coach uh, or a trainer or a physio the expense is more than double so it's uh, it is it is really tough and that's why you really need to be at the top to be able to uh, you know um manage these expenses or afford these expenses mm. but we're also uh, we're also seeing uh, a lot of uh, people around the tour top players also chipping in the sense you know Moratoglu Patrick Moratoglu the coach uh, along with Stefano Tsitsipas has got something going some players uh, ex players like Andy Roddick are throwing experiences with kind of optioning uh, but you you would you it's great to see these people come in and pitch in but you would want the tours and you want the people out there who are actually running these to 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 <coughs> help in right now because this is as as we all say this is unprecedented in world sport yeah i guess uh, you know everybody who sort of in a privileged uh, position and you know everybody wants to help everybody is trying to do their bit um you know we've got all these people who've come up with initiatives to to support uh, you know not only the people who are affected uh, by this pandemic but even you know the the, the lower ranked tennis players um even even in india i think somdev uh, you know he's he's got a charity going where uh, he's also trying to support you know uh, the ball kids or you know the markers and any support staff you know who who are really struggling in this situation so um you know um i've tried to chip in myself you know uh, spread awareness and and see uh, you know whoever is in a position to help so uh, every bit of help uh, goes a, goes a long way and uh, you know hopefully uh, tennis and and other sports can sort of survive this uh, situation hmm talking of the situation we've seen some of the big names in your sport come out and do over things to keep fans entertained you know federer started this volley challenge also uh, went on instagram and they're pretty much you know engaging the fan who's missing all these all this action at the moment but he also a crucial observation which sort of caught the attention of the world's media i'm not sure how much it's affected the uh, professionals like you but he suggested that this is probably a good time to merge the men's and the women's tours together what do you make of it yeah that would be actually very interesting uh, i think if if the two organizations sort of merge uh, and if we do look at uh, tournaments being uh, you know played together because right now you see uh, the women's and men's circuit is pretty much uh, separate you know most of the tournaments uh, are played uh, you know side by side or, or at different places except for the grand slams and few other tournaments uh, so um i think that would be great for tennis um you know there would be more viewership i think uh, the the unity would definitely help and personally i guess it would help me cuz uh, my wife she's a professional tennis player and uh, we we realize we don't get to spend that much time with each other because we're playing different sorts of tournaments but if you know we can we can spend you know play the play similar tournaments and and you know get to spend more time together that, that would uh, obviously be great 
uh, but that's something which uh, I think it's uh, Federer who you know who who mentioned that on his social media accounts, and uh, I think it would need a, a lot of uh, planning and uh, you know organization to 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 work towards something like that. So uh, I guess we'll just wait and see how how things uh, shape up. Uh, but it's it's an interesting thought, and I think it would be great for tennis. But Divic, can it work? Because you, know, you said the Grand Slams happen. You all you all you all play the Grand Slams. And there are a few tournaments where the men's and the women's tournaments run concurrently. You know, they run side by side. So can this work? If if, if you actually <clears throat> down to it, can it work? Um. So as far as the the, I don't know the 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 uh, the organizations are concerned. The organizations are concerned. Um. I'm sure it would need. A drastic change because right now they're completely different organizations. So, so to you know join two organizations, you know politically and like you know the workforce and everything, you know and and policies and everything would have to be really, you know, just completely you know work worked on. Um, so I I don't know about that that side, but uh, in terms of you know sort of the tournament sort of being played at the the same venue, um, you know you would need that sort of infrastructure at every event, uh, and I think. um you know right now the, the tournaments that i i would play uh, a lot of the places which are just men's tournaments the the number of tennis courts and the facilities are just about enough for um, you know the just just the men's event <clears throat> especially if you look at indoor uh, you know tournaments uh, a lot of these tournaments are played uh, on just two courts three courts so unless it's uh, it's it's an event uh, which has uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, indoor courts or or show courts because obviously you want spectators to be able to watch these matches so not just you know a particular tennis court uh, but you need uh, access to to watch matches on these courts and and a lot of these courts uh, it may not be possible but but still i think even if you know um, there is an increase in in some of uh, the, the the number of tournaments that have combined events i think it would be great Hmm. It's interesting the logistical issue. That's why I, I wanted to make a point about the logistical issue because obviously, say you go to the DLTA in Delhi, you can probably play a tournament yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But not everywhere in India. I mean, I've seen exactly. Davis Cup matches on single or double courts. I mean, it gets difficult. But the flip side is you could have mixed doubles being played through the year. <laughs> you play a mixed doubles what in the Olympic Games, Asian Games, and then yeah. also the Grand Slams. But then mixed doubles for someone like you who plays. primarily doubles this could become another career opportunity i mean just to maximize your 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 kind of income no definitely i mean right now if you look at it mixed doubles is only played at the grand slams or at events like the olympics and asian games so um i guess if it becomes a, a professional event that would uh, change things uh, quite a bit and then it would require a lot of planning i'm sure from both organizations or then hopefully one unified organization uh to to sort of set it up uh, as an as an event and then that would mean that they would have to play almost every uh, event with which is which would be a combined event i guess you know with the men's and women's combined then it would be tough to have uh, sort of separate events so i think it's a, it's a little far fetch but uh, i think that would be great for tennis for sure okay but you never know this is the era of far fetch who would have thought that the olympics would get postponed now yeah. you know you were waiting to in fact play your first olympic games it's been a long wait because india has done well at the olympics in the past we've just got one medal but we've always been there in terms of reckoning for that olympic medal how do you look at the postponement because uh, you know for you it was it was what at least a 16 17 year wait <laughs> to be in the close of olympic selection no definitely i mean i guess everybody has been uh, you know looking forward to the olympics it comes once in four years and and just under the circumstances it's it's only obvious that you know the 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 games have been pushed uh, forward um i mean I, I, you know at the beginning of this uh, you know lockdown people were saying oh maybe there is uh, still a chance that the olympics can still happen uh, but i think uh, you know a lot of the countries were were starting to struggle and and this was sort of i think this was going to happen and i think it's important right now that you know everybody sort of you know fights this this situation first and and sort of recovers from it before people can start preparing and and you know um, looking at at something like the olympics i mean obviously it's a it's a worldwide event it's the biggest sporting event in the world so we want uh, 
uh, a situation where everybody is sort of you know well prepared and 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 the competition is is you know is is played like in 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 the in the right spirit so the japanese prime minister shinzo abe has been saying that you know that if the virus is not contained then the olympics will not be held how disturbing is that thought for someone like you you know who has waited so long to be a part of the olympics that you may not have an olympics at all yeah i mean it would obviously be devastating but you know um no one had expected something like this to happen and it's, it's not just with the olympics games i guess it would be um even uh, you know worse like if if say the the, the tennis tournaments don't don't start i mean yes olympics is there and it, it's going to be for me if i get to play you know it would be uh, probably the the biggest event i've ever played in and it would be really special but uh, having said that we are still you know you be we need to be playing our tennis tournaments as well so if if i'm assuming if the olympics is not played then i'm assuming that it's also going to affect the other you know uh, sports and and tennis would also be affected and uh, if if we don't play tournaments this year or even even next year i think that would be uh, pretty pretty devastating okay now i know that the olympics they have got postponed but at the start of the year did you sort of sit down with uh, rohan bopanna with whom you won the asian games gold medal uh, or somebody else and think that you know let's plan for the olympics this is what we need to do perhaps after the french club to tournaments together uh, especially in doubles it's essential to get that combination going so have you thought about this and is that something no. which push forward to the next year yeah definitely i mean uh, so uh you know what we 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 had fixed to play three tournaments on clay so we were going to play madakesh uh we were going to play budapest and we were going to play estoril uh and then uh, uh obviously rohan was uh, heading to indian wells but then indian wells had obviously gotten uh, cancelled but we had agreed to play the tournaments on or these three tournaments on clay and then uh, you know uh, the the cut off for the for the olympics was right after french open and you know once the you know we would have made the list and we would have uh, looked to play the the you know most of the grass season as well uh but now that you know um the olympics is 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 postponed i'm sure we'll we'll you know discuss whenever the the circuit is back on you know what tournaments we can play together and uh how best we can prepare ourselves um uh this this also sort of gives us time i know you know the the olympics have been postponed but this gives us time to you know keep working on on ourselves keep uh, improving and 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 working on our rankings to to make sure we 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 do make the cut and you know uh, give ourselves the best chance to to give uh, to to really try to win a medal for in okay now this is hypothetical debate but what will be the new normal once the tennis season uh, resumes uh there is going to be social distancing that you are a doubles player so for you it's not just you and the court there's another person right next to you You know those fist bumps, you know all that stuff that you doubt players keep doing. So all of that could change the way, the way we look at bonding on a tennis court. All that may change uh, at some point of time when the season resumes. No, I definitely feel the new normal will will change. I mean, uh, for in day to day life, you know, uh, things will change. Travel will change. Um, you know, communication. I guess you know. Right now, as as players, we step on a court. You know. there's obviously you know you you have interaction with the fans and you know you see like you know just high fiving everybody going on the way so i think all that would obviously you know change but uh, i don't think things will change on court like you if you know you would still have the same sort of bond uh, or bonding with, with your partner as as before because yeah you at the end of the day you are spending a lot of time with that person so i'm sure like you know uh, high fiving or fist bump would not make a, a big difference because you are actually spending most of your time with with that person so um yeah I, i don't think it would make any changes on court but uh, yeah otherwise you know all the other things that i mentioned i think it would uh, it would be interesting to see what 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 happens or you know what's in store yeah i know in your kit bag you probably have to carry a liberal dose of sanitizers now at least yes, for the next sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i like yeah. to I, you know, i like to end this interview on a on a optimistic something to look forward to instead of the doom yeah. and which surrounds us at the moment so when this lockdown ends when the world sort of limps back to normality what's that one thing at the top of your bucket list that you want to do well uh, to be honest i i do miss traveling uh, you know um i i do miss playing uh, the tournament so so what better than you know getting back to normal life and and going out there and and playing uh, playing uh, you know playing playing my tournament so 
uh but but i guess once the lockdown uh, is over i'd obviously like to go back to delhi you know i've not uh, met my uh, family back home uh, in a while now and i'd like to maybe spend some time with them and and you know get ready for the tournaments um i'm a big fan of uh, you know flying and like hotels like I, i'm i'm big into like uh, airline miles and and hotel memberships and stuff like that so you know every week you know we are obviously flying a lot uh, you know i'm researching flights and hotels and this and that so i guess uh, i miss a bit of that as well so it would be sort of good to get back to to normal uh, routine okay high flying divit sharan ground <laughs> ground it with his wife thank god for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, divit thank you so much thank you so much for taking out not time and, and and chatting i know it's uh, it's the evening here not exactly yeah. evening back in in uh, manchester hopefully they start the football and hopefully you can actually get to see some sporting action because that's something we all are craving at the moment i think what this uh, lockdown has done and uh, the pandemic is that we sort of learn to appreciate sport and sports persons even more because we sort of took it for granted in life that oh we are going to have sport on any given day that's not happen so yeah. stay safe you need to stay safe and hopefully you're back to your hotel stays and your <laughs> hair soon thank you so much thanks ajay great talking to you We own broadband edition presented by Vedantu India get free live online courses 